Thank you, Tony. Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you here this morning. It is truly good to gather together in our Father's house. Welcome to the month of May. Hallelujah. I can't believe how quickly April went by, but I'm glad it's gone. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get our, uh, get our time together started this morning by uh, reading for our, our life verse for May. It comes from the book of Psalms. It's part of Psalm 145, verse 13. Let's read these words together. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Several quick reminders this morning. If you didn't get an electronic copy of our uh, focus for May, there are several copies on the table by the door. If you need an extra one, feel free to grab a hard copy on your way out. There's uh, quite a few things restarting this month, so please make sure that you have at least one copy of that with you. Giving Tree will have some new leaves on it next week. Again, we are continuing to collect non-perishable items for uh, Place of Miracles as well as for other food banks in the area. Uh, this will continue to be an ongoing project. This is something that we will do year-round in addition to the items that um, either the uh, South Richmond or the Middle District may be looking for through the WMU. We'll obviously, we'll keep doing those as well. But uh, there will be new, flat or new leaves on the, on the tree starting next week. Uh, I want to thank everybody for their, your generous offering in the past. Uh, we have made a big difference. We have helped a lot of people in the county and in surrounding areas through your giving, and I greatly appreciate your generosity. Speaking of generosity, thanks go out to uh, all of you. We are really close to our goal of getting the parking, lots, parking lot lights paid off. Uh, we're somewhere around $200 shy, so that's really good for a short period of time. Thank you all so much for that. Women's Bible study is gonna continue this week on Tuesday. Uh, it'll be here at noon. Uh, of course, all ladies are welcome to come and join that. And we want to thank Katie for all of the work that she does to continue this program, uh, to have the material ready and to, to lead that group. Katie, thank you always for that help. Uh, and our Zoom Bible study on the book of Revelation will continue Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Want a couple, a couple of additional reminders. Number one, next Sunday, uh, May 8th, is Mother's Day. Just want to remind everybody about that. The following Saturday on the 14th, we will have our church-wide cleanup, uh, church cleanup day part two. Uh, still some things that need to be done. If you want some information on what we're going to be doing and how you can help, check with uh, Ms. Sue, and she will be more than happy to uh, answer any questions you may have. We are continuing, as you can tell, to resume our regular activities here at the church. Uh, I want to encourage you to pray about helping out Marlon and, and Victor and, and our chancel choir. Uh, this is a day of new beginnings. We sang that hymn just a couple of weeks ago. And we are restarting many new things, including getting the choir back together again. Uh, it sounds like the Blues Brothers, doesn't it? No. Uh, we want to get the choir back together. But we want to invite anyone who has that gift, any one of you who God has given that gift of, of singing, uh, to, to come and to join, join in with Marlon and, and Victor and the others. And um, as we seek to rebuild and as we seek to rebegin and reimagine uh, what our church can be, I also want to um, let you know that we are considering resuming Wednesday night dinners. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet, I think it's the 25th, April 25th. Uh, if you're interested in being part, May, May, I'm sorry, May 25th, see I'm still stuck in April. Uh, May 25th, if you're interested in being a part of that, there's a sign-up sheet uh, on, the, on the bulletin board. Please check that out and sign up for that as well. Um, I think that's about all I've got for right now. So why don't we go ahead and start our time of worship with a word of prayer. We come rejoicing this day, Creator God, seeking your presence here with us. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. 
All of creation is under your mighty hand. Father, we ask you to open our hearts and our minds to receive your holy word this day and then to lead us out into the world to do your will. These things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and for his sake. Amen. Good morning, y'all. If you can stand as you're able to sing, open the eyes of my heart, and you'll see the lyrics here on the overhead. our time of morning prayer, I would ask you to please be in prayer for our church and for our church family, especially those who are on our prayer lists. You have prayers, uh, you have prayer list in your highlights, but there's also our continuous prayer list, which is now located in the uh, basket on the counter uh, to the office. So please make sure you take one of those. It's just been recently updated. Take a moment now to share with your Heavenly Father those blessings and those concerns that are on your heart. And then I invite you to join me as we pray together. Let us go to the Lord.
Holy Father, as we gather in your house this day, we have much to be thankful for. You shelter us and you provide for our every need. You give rest to all who are weary from the daily struggles we face. And you provide refuge and hope for the lost and searching. With humility this morning, we bow before you and ask that you hear both our spoken and our unspoken prayers. You, O oh God, are truly the vine, the vine that we all cling to in times of trouble as well as in times of joy. You are our lifeline in all situations. And even when we fail to be obedient to your will in our lives, you still cover us with your mercy. You are truly slow to anger and quick to forgive. Teach us, Father God, to be more like you, especially in this world where revenge seems to be the answer more often than forgiveness. May we gird ourselves with your armor as we seek to be as wise as serpents, yet as gentle as doves. We ask a special prayer for healing this morning, Lord, healing of our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. We pray for each one of the individuals that are on our prayer list, as well as those who we hold silently in our hearts. Each one of us is facing a challenge or an obstacle today, Lord. So we pray not only for our family and for our friends, but for ourselves as well. Father, as only you can, we ask that you will heal us so that in turn we may bring healing to others in this hurting world in which we live. Remind us daily, Father, that we do not always know the conditions of those around us, but we know that we can pray for each one. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and unite your people once again. Help us to accentuate those things which we have in common instead of focusing on our differences. Bring peace into our hearts, into our cities, and into our world, we pray. In the blessed name of the one who taught us what true peace really is, our Lord Jesus Christ, who also taught us to pray with one voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If y'all can stand as you're able to sing number 134, Jesus paid it all, all verses. Change the love. 
leper's spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all. died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Let us pray. Our Lord and Savior, we are so blessed that we are able to meet today in your house and openly worship you. Bless the offerings we are about to receive so they may be used to further your ministries and our service to you. We give freely, Lord, for there is nothing we could give that matches the glory of your Son that you gave to us, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, which guides us daily. All we have is yours, Lord. Guide us and direct us so that we can be strong witnesses as we humbly seek to do thy will. In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture reading today is from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. May God bless each of us through the reading and hearing of his word. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Father, we praise and thank you for the many blessings received by our church and by each of us. We are here today to continue learning and be renewed as we can become better disciples for you and minister to our sisters and brothers in Christ. Guide and help us to keep our eyes and heart on you and not be influenced by life circumstances. Let us live the plans and purposes you have for each of us. Open our hearts and give us understanding of the scriptures and the message we hear from Pastor Bill. 
May we draw strength knowing you will never leave us and that your strength, love, and compassion is new every morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tony, I can't start. thank you and Victor enough for teaching us that beautiful song. It's been just a couple of years, but I feel like it's been part of our lives forever. So thank you very much. All right. 
I believe today is a, a first, at least for me. Uh, in all of the years that I've been preaching, I, I think this is the first time I have ever preached out of the Book of Lamentations. I'm not quite sure why the Lord gave us this verse or gave me this verse last month to, uh, to read as our life verse, but the more I read it and the more I read it and the more I studied on it, the more it began to grow in meaning for me. It's about second chances. And I don't think there's a single person here here or at home watching us or listening to us that hasn't wished for, prayed for, hoped for a second chance at some point in their lives. So it was with the prophet Jeremiah, who was the writer of the book of Lamentations. If you're not familiar with the book, it's very short, and it sits in between the prophecies of Jeremiah and Ezekiel in the Old Testament. Jeremiah was the prophet who served, or he was God's prophet who served under five kings to the people of Judah in the final 40 years of Judah's existence prior to being overrun by the Babylonians in 586 BC. As I said, Jeremiah ministered under five different kings and saw much as he watched his country, his nation, and the people decline. So much so that Jeremiah is often referred to as the weeping prophet. As the title states, these few chapters are filled with sadness and lamenting as the once powerful and God-fearing people of Judah slowly backslid into sinful and wicked living. By today's standards, Jeremiah would be considered a failure for his people were overrun and taken captive by the Babylonians. But as a man of God, Jeremiah was anything but a failure. In God's eyes, Jeremiah was very much a success because even in the face of seemingly overwhelming odds, Jeremiah remained obedient and faithful to his God and to his calling. I would never discourage any of you, I would never discourage any of you from reading your Bible, but I do want to warn you, the book of Lamentations can be incredibly depressing. It was a difficult time in Jeremiah's life, in Jeremiah's world, but unfortunately reminds me an awful lot of what we're going through in our world today. These verses that Debbie read for us this morning can be considered, if you will, the one bright spot in Jeremiah's telling of the story of these final days. And Debbie, thank you for the reading and for the prayers. All of that being said, let me ask you this question. Can you think of a specific time in your life when you had the desire for God to give you a second chance. Most of us can think of at least one event in our lives when we acted or reacted in haste to a situation or an event leading to a, mm, I wish I hadn't done that. A time when we would have thankfully welcomed a do-over or as Donald and Larry refer to it, a, a mulligan. I never knew what that was until I started actually watching golf, and now I understand. It's a second chance. It's a do-over. It's a, oops, let me try again. All of us have experienced a time when we were so incredibly grateful that our God is a God of mercy, a God who gives second chances to his children. But for our purposes this morning, I want to spend some time looking at one of the Old Testament's best examples of a do-over, a holy do-over, if you will. It appears in the book of Jonah. And not only do I want to look at the book of Jonah this morning, but I want to see how it applies to our lives today. We're all familiar with the story of Jonah, right? Jonah and the whale, big fish, 
whatever, whatever version of the translation of the Bible you read. Jonah and the whale, Jonah and the big fish. We all know the story. It contains one of the most, it, it is one of the shortest books in the Bible, and yet it has such power that even thousands of years later, you say Jonah and everybody thinks of the whale or the fish. But yet it's one of the shortest books in the Bible. It's about a very reluctant prophet who instead of leading, oh, instead of following God's leading, chose literally, literally to run away from God. I'm not going to read the whole book this morning, although it wouldn't take that much time. But there are three areas that I want to focus on today. And if you'd like to open your Bible and follow along through the book of Jonah, feel free to do that. But I'm going to be quoting from, from the book quite a bit. The story starts out, or the, the book starts out this way. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. How far was, was Jonah willing to flee so that he did not have to take God's message to the much despised Assyrian people of Nineveh? Well, if we say that Joppa was here, Nineveh was about 700 miles this way over some very rough and some very dangerous seas. But instead, Jonah chose to go to Tarshish, which was more than 2,000 miles over those same storm-filled seas in the opposite direction. That's how badly Jonah wanted to not go and follow God's leading. That's how badly Jonah refused to go and preach to the people of Nineveh. That's how much they were despised. Well, that scenario, that part of the story begs this question. What distances have you gone to in your life to avoid God's call on your life? Remember the story, one of my favorite, one of my favorite passages in, in the book of Genesis is right after God created the earth and created the animals and created the trees and created Adam and Eve, right after that, God went looking for Adam in the garden. And apparently this was something that he did on a regular basis. Apparently God and Adam would meet up in the garden on a regular basis. And they would talk, oh man, I would love to have been there. Huh? But Adam hid from the Lord on this one particular day because he was ashamed. Adam literally thought he could hide from God. How many times have we tried to do that in our own lives? Or what about the story of the prodigal son? And y'all know how much that means to me because you know that's my story. It was written about me in my life. Or maybe it was written and I just happened to follow it. I'm not sure. But the prodigal son who disobeyed his father, and where did he go? Did he go around the corner? Did he go to the next town? No, he went to a distant land. How far have you gone in your life to hide from God? Notice what the writer said in verse 3 of the book of Jonah, of chapter 1. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into the ship to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Down. Down. Psalm 139, seven, verses 7 through 10 asks this question. Where can I go, O God, from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? 
If I ascend it to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, you are there. If I take the wings in the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. When we try to run from God like Jonah did, when we try to run from God like the people of Judah did, we find ourselves in a downward spiral and it just keeps getting worse and worse until finally we hit rock bottom and we have nowhere else to go but to cry out to our Heavenly Father. We waste so much time trying to run away from God knowing in our heart of hearts that we never leave His presence. Knowing also that sooner or later we will all come face to face. We will all stand before God and give an account of our lives. In Jonah's case, right here in the beginning of the story is where God gave Jonah a second chance. But really, do you think Jonah thought it was a second chance? The Bible says that the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah found himself where? Down in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Down in the belly of the fish. Now, I don't know about you, but this doesn't sound like much of a second chance, does it? It doesn't sound much of a, um, a pleasant situation. I've never been in the belly of a fish, but I have cut up enough fish to tell you that what's in the belly of a fish really isn't all that fun. It's, uh, in fact, the only thing pretty about it is it's pretty smelly. But the point is that when our loving God provides us a second chance, even when he provides us a second chance, we may still resist it. Now we can resist it, or we can be like Jonah, and we can recognize that second chance. Jonah could have sat in the belly of the fish and complained the whole time. He could have done that. And I dare say... Many people probably would. But chapter 2 says that from inside the fish, Jonah prayed to his Lord. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help. And you, O oh God, listened to my cry. I thought, I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. This is a very descriptive writing. To the roots of the mountains I sank. The earth beneath barred me, barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, you brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, rose to your holy temple. Now listen carefully, verse 8. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Those who cling to worthless idols, those who worship other gods, turn away from God, but God does not turn away from them. Jonah knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that God was indeed the one true God. Even though Jonah had run from this God, he never completely lost his faith. So he finished the prayer with these words. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. Three days in the belly of a smelly fish. And he prayed. And he found salvation once again. I hope none of us ever have to spend three days in the belly of a stinky fish. 
But I also know that many of us have spent three days, five days, many days in a dark place in our lives. Mostly because of things that we have done or failed to do. Yet God is always there with us. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 21 says this. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Just as Jonah, after three days, was freed from the belly of the fish, just as Jesus, after three days, rose from the depths of the grave, so too, by faith, you and I are saved from spiritual death. Romans 10, verse 9, God promises that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not might be, not could be, you will be saved. There is one, ad, one additional example of how our God is a God of second chances in the book of Jonah. This comes up in chapter 3. Jonah fulfilled his mission as God's prophet, and he told the people, he warned the people of Nineveh of God's impending wrath on their nation because of their sinfulness. Starting at verse 5, it's, it, the book reads like this. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. And sackcloth is exactly what it sounds like. It's exactly what it sounds like. You remember the old sacks of, of wheat or grain or flour or whatever, you know, they, they, they're like this big, and, and it's that burlap, that really rough, you know, brown stuff. They would put on these sacks to show that they were in mourning. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king, the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, and covered himself in sackcloth and sat down in the dust. And verse 10 says, because of their obedience, when God saw what the Ninevites had done and how they had turned from their evil ways, he did what? He gave them a second chance. He relented and did not bring on them the destruction that he had threatened. My friends, I believe the lesson for you and I today is simple. If the idol-worshipping people of Nineveh could repent of their wickedness and receive a second chance from God, how much will our God hear the humble prayers of those who follow him? How much more will our God show his mercy and his grace to us. Surely the one who sent his son to die for us is abounding, is abundant in forgiveness. Second Peter verse th uh, verse, chapter 3 and verse 9 reads this. The Lord is not slow in his promise as some understand slowness. Instead he is patient. Instead he is patient with you. Not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. It's not that he's not going to punish. It's not that he allows sin. It's that he is patient and allows for us to find him once again, allows for us to repent of our sins, allows for us to turn around. He gives us that second chance. I don't know about you, are you in need of a second chance today? Maybe there are, maybe you are. Maybe it's not today, but it'll be tomorrow. Maybe it was yesterday, I don't know. But I know that each one of us has something that we need to give over to God. Something that we've, we've tried to correct or something we've tried to fix ourselves. We love to do that, don't we? Oh, I can fix that. No, you can't. <laughs> you sinned. It's a sin. You can't fix it but you can repent from it. You can receive a second chance. And now's that chance. 
Now's the time to, for confession. It's, it's our time to come clean with God so that we can be made new. So we're going to gather around the table of our Lord this morning. And we're going to receive the gifts of his body and his blood. And we're going to get our second chance. And we're going to start with a clean slate. So I want to invite you to join me and take a moment to free yourself of the burden that you're carrying. Free yourself of whatever it is that is separating you from being in a complete and total relationship with your Heavenly Father. And offer up a silent prayer. And then receive these gifts from our risen Savior. Let's pray together quietly. Beloved, if you sincerely meant the words you just prayed and truly are seeking a second chance, know that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen.
For on the night that Jesus met with his disciples, on the night that he would be betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks to his heavenly Father and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this, he said, in remembrance of me. And after the supper was over, he took the cup and once again gave thanks to his heavenly Father. And he said to his disciples, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, the promise of salvation. Do this, he said, in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the promise of eternal life. Amen. If y'all could stand as you're able to sing number 387, Blessed Be the Tie, first verse only. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, as we go our, way, our separate ways to share the gospel, to share the good news of Jesus Christ and him risen and now ascended into heaven with his heavenly Father. Go now with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Go and join together in unity and peace for all. Amen. <laughs>